Do you have any idea who might have vandalized your synagogue and your home? No, no idea at all. This is generally a, a very peaceful community. Have you or the Jewish Center received any threats lately? You no, know, no, not, nothing of the sort. Uh, although, this is the anniversary of Kristallnacht. Doesn't that have something to do with the Holocaust? Yes, the night of broken glass. A turning point in the Nazi persecution of Jews over 50 years ago. And do you think whoever went on this rampage knew about Crystal Mack? Knew about hatred of that, I'm certain. Thank you very much for your time, Rabbi Markovitz. Which play by Shakespeare is more tragic, Romeo and Juliet or Hamlet? Excuse me, ma'am. We're here to pick up these three boys regarding the graffiti incident. Yes, sir, one. Jimmy DePresta, Tony Morton, and Rick Hadley. These officers would like to speak with you outside. Come on, 
boys. Let's go. I mean, they didn't hurt you, did they? Yeah, I'm fine, Dad. But my son is not the kind of kid to vandalize other people's property. I want to know what proof you have. We're going to have to book him first, sir. Where did you get these ideas? My God, I work with Jews. We've had them over to the house. Mom, it's not that big a deal. Tony, this is not how we raised you. Come on, let's move it. And where did you boys get the idea to paint swastikas on a rabbi's house? Television. Old war movies, some jokes, kids at school. We really didn't know what we were doing, Your Honor. It was stupid and childish, and it seemed like fun at the time. No. No, I believe that you boys knew exactly what you were doing a lot more than you're willing to admit. These were anti-Semitic symbols and slogans directed against Jewish people and institutions on the commemoration of Kristallnacht. Your Honor, these kids never heard of this. Crystal, whatever it is? May I continue? Now, the fact that you boys have entered guilty pleas indicates a willingness to take responsibility for your actions. But, given the serious nature of your crime, I am prepared to send you to a juvenile correctional facility for a maximum of two years. Two years? Did he say he's sending them to jail? It's more than they give drug dealers with guns. This isn't right. I thought you spoke to the judge. I sent him a letter. Quiet down, please. I have received a letter from Rabbi Markovitz recommending probation instead of jail. Excuse me, Your Honor. Probation? My name is Albert Goldberg, Your Honor. I watch members of my family and my best friend get, get killed with Nazi bullets. And, and these kids, these criminals, put swastikas on my car. No. no. They deserve to rot in jail. We teach them a lesson. Let them find out what it's like to be persecuted. For God's sake, don't. Don't give them a slap on the wrist and an ice cream cone. This shouldn't be about revenge. Let's give it to Judge. Rabbi Markovitz, would you care to add anything? Your Honor, Your Honor, I agree with Mr. Goldberg and this gentleman who proudly proclaims his son's ignorance. These boys need to be taught a lesson, but not in jail, but in the very synagogue they defaced. And if it's all right with Your Honor, I should like to be the one to teach them. Quiet down, please. Mr. Goldberg, I absolutely understand your feelings. But in a spirit of tolerance and forgiveness, I have decided to take Rabbi Markovitz up on his offer. Stand up, boy. I am placing each of you on probation. I am also directing that each of you attend 25 hours of instruction in Jewish culture and faith to be conducted by Rabbi Markovitz. You will also pay for the damages you caused. Don't let me down. Don't let your parents down. Don't let yourself down. Court is now adjourned. The symbol you just painted of the swastika. Can you tell me what it means? Yeah, well, it's German. Yeah, it's like, uh, like their flag or something. Instead of stars like we have on the American flag, the Germans have their thing. What is it about the swastika that you find so appealing? Well, I think it looks sort of cool, like on the side of an old bomber plane. It's intense. It's a sign of power. Yeah, like it's telling the whole world to back off. Jews hate it. Why do you think Jews have a problem with the swastika? I, I don't know. Because it's anti... Semitic. That means anti-Jewish. That's certainly true. All right. Let's see if we can find some other reasons. Boys, scoot your chairs around so you can see the screen. March 
1939, the Germans occupied Prague. Tens of thousands of Czech Jews were caught in the Nazi trap. Within 24 hours, the first anti-Jewish atrocities took place. In Milets, the Jews were locked inside their synagogue, which was then set on fire. Those who managed to break out were shot by the surrounding ring of German soldiers. Allowed only a minimum of food, forced to do punitive labor. They existed as prisoners, totally at the mercy of their Nazi captors. Plans went ahead with the establishment of a massive concentration camp complex at Auschwitz Birkenau, to which Jews from all over Europe would be sent. Arrivals were greeted by an orchestra. A completely new use of the German language was devised to create a sense of security. Deportation had become resettlement. Selection for death had become special treatment. Gas chambers had become showers. People often ask, why did the Jews go like sheep to the slaughter? How can they know what it was like? What do they know of a people who refuse to believe in the death of mankind? Rabbi Markovitz, not to sound disrespectful or anything, but did all that stuff really happen? What, are you brain dead? How can you say that after what we just saw? It's just unbelievable. You know, you're unbelievable. It just doesn't seem real. It, it happened so long ago. Another 50 years could go by, and the Holocaust would still seem unimaginable, even to those who lived through it. I still don't get why it happened. Why do you think it happened? Well, because Hitler was this evil psycho who hated the Jews. Hitler didn't act alone. A lot of people helped him in his orchestrated plan to, to eliminate the Jewish people. It was called the final solution. But why did he hate the Jews? Well, because they were different. You agree? Jews are different? Yeah, well, back then. Well, Jews... I guess they do some weird things that, that make them look different. Like that beanie thing you wear on your head all the time. My yarmulke. <laughs> Actually, it's uh, mainly worn to cover bald spots. <laughs> now, I know you boys would love to stay, but I'm afraid I have to kick you out. Next week, we'll talk a little bit more about beanies and all the other things that make Jews seem different. And again, who knows? Maybe we'll discover that Jews and Christians also have a lot in common. Next Tuesday at 4. See you, Rabbi. Uh, hey, Tony, over here, I'm in the clear. Pop it! Anything along your path in the history of football. Suppress the catch of it. Yeah, the crowd goes wild. He goes right. He goes right. Touchdown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, great yeah. Jimmy the Presser. Now, the great Jimmy the Presser will go for the extra point. Uh, win the game far. again. Step aside. Okay. Hey. Your Highness. It's up, Ben. Uh-oh. Game over. We better get that before Goldberg comes out. I'll call the cops and have you punked arrested again. <laughs> the great Jimmy the Press. Hey, nice, nice to play. When do you think the rabbi's going to make us take that off? He hasn't said anything about it yet. Yeah, so don't bring it up. Go on. Come on. Someone you all know. My mother? Your mother, no. Your mother's next. Well, who is it, Rabbi? Now, you don't like surprises? Rabbi Markovitz. You 
passed by your house the other day. Don't you want us to take that stuff off your garage? Not yet. When? The time is right. Get me out of here. What's going on? Oh, my God. Is that who I think it is? Bishop. Oh, God. Frank Jim. Good afternoon, boys. Thank you for coming, Frank. Oh, it's my pleasure, Jim. Sit, sit, boy. Sit, sit. You all know Bishop Rodheimer? You may have noticed uh, the bee. Covers my bald spot. <laughs> By the way, Gene, I love your yarmulke. Oh, here, yeah, be my guest. Yeah. There you go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Pink is nice. <laughs> Good fit. It's interesting. Yours is black, mine is pink, and yet we wear our head coverings for the same reason, out of reverence for God. Fascinating, the similarities, huh? It's easy to forget that Jews and Christians have a lot in common. In fact, are you boys aware that Christianity actually springs from Judaism? The Pope calls Judaism the older brother of the Catholic Church. And as you know, Jesus himself was a Jew. Tell him about the prayers. Yeah, I'm getting there. Be patient. Patient? We're still waiting for the Messiah. How patient can you get? Gene, you've been telling me that same joke for 35 years. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, where was I? Uh, the prayers. The Old Testament, the New Testament. Ah, yes. Jews and Catholics follow the same Ten Commandments which Moses, a Jew, handed down from Mount Sinai. We also use many of the same psalms from the Old Testament. Boys, behind your seats you'll find prayer books. Go take, take them, take them. Turn to page 297, Psalm 150. Lies backwards. Um, it goes right to left. Please stand, boys, and read along with us. Hallelujah. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him whose power the heavens proclaim. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him for his chauffeur blast. Praise him with awesome music. Praise him with drum and dance. If Jews and Christians have so much in common, then how come we don't learn more about that in Sunday school? You know, that's a very good point. We really should spend more time in church talking about our common bond with Judaism and other religions. It would certainly remove some of the mystery. And promote a sense of respect. No question. It just seems like there's a lot of stuff we don't hear about. Like the Holocaust, they don't, they don't teach that in high school. What a tragedy. When you consider that six million Jews perished, and how many of those were children, Gene? About a million and a half. You mean little kids were killed in the Holocaust? Little kids, teenagers. How many non-Jews were murdered by the Nazis? Millions. Wait a minute. What do you mean by non-Jews? Christians, gypsies, homosexuals, handicapped people, anyone who was considered different. Anyone who, who, who stood up against Hitler, even some of his own people. You know that many Christians risked their lives hiding Jews from the Nazis. Look at Oscar Schindler, you saw the movie. He was a man who risked everything he had, lost everything to save 1,100 Jews. So you can see Jews and Christians share a common bond that goes beyond the borders of religion. Which reminds me, Gene. I really would like to keep this yarmulke, but I have the feeling that, uh, that you'll miss it. If you're that fond of it, it's yours. Really? Mm. Oh, well, you keep the skull cap. You sure? Oh, I have plenty of those, but not in black velvet. <laughs> in a few weeks, we're going to see Schindler's List. At the template? Ah, you can never find a place to park there. I prefer the Bijou. Besides, popcorn is much better. Now. What are those, Rabbi? Passports. Each one belonged to a teenage boy whose life was altered in some way by the Holocaust. They look really old. They are. 1938, 1939. These are very valuable. I must ask you to please be careful with them. This one belonged to Georges Adler. He's 16, lived in Paris. 
Likes to play ball in the streets with his friends, go to the movies, race around on his bike. Tony here, here's one that belonged to Roberto Giovanni. Fifteen, lived in Parma, a small village in Italy. Like to swim, climb mountains, paint. Wait, he was Italian and Jewish? Yeah. I didn't know they made Italian Jews. Tony, there are Italian Jews, Irish Jews, African-American Jews. Everyone is welcome. Jimmy, this was Edward Demko's passport. He was 16, lived in Prague, Czechoslovakia. He played goalie on his soccer team at school. He was Catholic. Now, here's what I want you boys to do. I want you to become detectives. Find out everything you can about these boys. Well, what became of them during the war? What happened to their families? And when we go to the Museum of Tolerance, we'll find out if any of them managed to survive. Rabbi Markovic, this is starting to sound like homework. Huh? A little assignment, no big deal. You might even uh, enjoy it. Now, here is a list of library books. That might be very helpful to you. If anyone has any difficulties, please call me. Huh? Excuse the escort. 